Open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Let it rain. Come on, sing your church. Open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. And let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. We worship you this morning, God. In spirit and truth, God, we love you. Come on, somebody help me praise him and worship him. We love you with all of our hearts, our minds, our soul, our bodies, and our strength this morning. Father God, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith. And we lift your wonderful people up before you on this morning. Lord, as we go into the word of God, we pray that these five things will not hinder the answer to their prayer. God, we pray that you make the word sweet, make it so simple that even a child would be able to understand. We pray for wisdom. We pray for knowledge. We pray for understanding. We pray for insight. Minister to us this morning. We say, not our will, but let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, amen. Praise God, praise God. Isn't our God awesome? So on this morning, as we continue our series, we want to talk about five hindrances to answered prayer. Five hindrances to answered prayer. The first one we want to talk about is unconfessed sin unconfessed sin will cause your prayer to be hindered. It's plain and simple. Let's go into the book of Psalms chapter 66 verse 18. David said, if I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. David said, if I had not confessed to God the sin that I had in my heart, he said the Lord would not have listened. So we see right from this one verse, unconfessed sin in your life, stuff that you refuse to repent of, that you know it's wrong. If you do not repent of that sin in your life, it will hinder your prayer. Are you listening to me? It's, it's plain and simple. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, David said, the Lord would not have listened. I want him to listen to me. And to get him to listen, you got you to gotta confess the sin that's in your life. Ask, repent of it. Ask him to forgive you and wash you in his blood. First John chapter 1 verse 9 said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want my prayer answered. Absolutely, if something's wrong in my life, I repent, I ask for his forgiveness. That's what you have to do so that prayer can be answered. The second hindrance to God answering your prayer is rejecting and neglecting to obey the word of God. Listen to this in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9 in the King James Version says, He that turneth away his heir from hearing the law or from hearing the word, even his prayer shall be abomination. Are you listening? Solomon in the book of Proverbs says, if you turn away your heir from the word, if you start neglecting the word and rejecting it and refusing to walk in obedience to the word of God, your prayer is even an abomination to God. 
It's something filthy coming up to God. When you reject his word, when you refuse to walk in obedience to the word of God, what is it that God's been speaking to you from his word and asking you to do? If you don't do it, your disobedience, your neglect, your rejection of God's word will cause that prayer to not be heard and even answered. This is why Jesus said in the book of John chapter 15 verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it will be done for you. Because if you're walking in obedience to his word, he is going to answer that prayer. But if you're walking in disobedience to the word of God, your prayer is not going to be answered. God wouldn't even listen to you. It doesn't matter who you are. It's plain and simple. Let's move on to the third thing. The third thing that will cause your prayer to not be answered is unforgiveness in your heart, hanging on to bitterness, hanging on to unforgiveness, refusing to forgive other people of the wrong that they had done to you. And I'm going to show it to you in Scripture. Let's go into the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24 through 26. The Bible says, therefore, I say unto you, this is Jesus, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. After Jesus quoted that, after he said that verse, there's, there's something else he attached to it. He said, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your heavenly father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Unforgiveness is a hindrance to our prayers being answered. Because God said, Jesus said, if you don't forgive other people of the wrong that they have done to you, God is not going to forgive you. And if God is not forgiving you, you're wasting your time praying. You got to go and fix it. You got to go and make things right. I remember when I was on that first 40 day, 40 night fast, I was believing God to give me the power to heal the sick, to cast out devils. I wanted to see God working great miracles through my life. And I remember when I got a little ways into that fast, it was probably around day 15 or 18, God began to confront me of all of the people that I had wronged, even as a Christian, as a sinner, and as a Christian, the people that I had wronged. And God showed me, I mean, it was over 80 people. I had to, I had to beg and ask for their forgiveness. God said, if you don't forgive these people and ask for their forgiveness, you will not walk in the power. Your prayer will not be answered. Man, you talk about, it was humiliating. I, I did not want to call some of those folks because, <laughs> yeah, because of pride. You're right. Because it's pride. When you don't want to humble yourself, it's pride. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he, he, he will exalt you in due season. God resists the proud. But he gives his grace to the humble. And you know, while I was struggling with, with reaching out to those 80-something people that God gave me that list, and I was struggling, I just felt the anointing of God. I felt the presence of God just lift off of me like, like taking a blanket from off somebody. And it, it frightened me. I realized, man, God means business. God, God ain't. Look, I, I just felt like God walked away from me. I said, well, I got to fix this. It was a terrible feeling. And I believe God was nudging me to make it right. And I, I just went, I began to call. And of course, you know, when God asks you to do something, if you think it's going to be easy, I got news for you. And you know, just about half of those people, when I called them, sure enough, they weren't even available. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. It took me three hours to build myself up, to make the phone call, and I'm calling, and they ain't even there. Come on, God. Make it, you you could have made it easier for me. But you know, God's wanting to test, test. He was testing me out to make sure I meant business. 
and finally I got a hold of all of those people. And some of them thought I was crazy, actually. So, you know, because some of the people I called, they weren't saved. But I'd wronged them when I was not saved. They was like, dude, are you in your right mind? They, they said, man, I, I already forgot about that. I Man, they said, they said I didn't, I let that thing go long. I'm like, you know what? It, it don't matter what you, I said, look, I have to call and make it right, man. I said, I'm praying and God's telling. They said, well, you know, just do what God wants you to do. But they said, look, I forgive you, man. We are good. And you know, every time they forgave me, ooh, I felt so good. I felt real good. It just felt good to, to just obey God and make things right. And you know what? I got all of those people. Every last one of them forgave me. And I repented to them and humbled myself. Now, nah, listen, let me be honest with you. Some of them went and bragged and said, guess who called me begging for forgiveness? You know what? Look, I didn't care. Make me look bad all you want. It didn't matter. What mattered to me was... I got my line cleared with God. Come on, somebody. And after that 40-day, 40 40-night 40 fast was finished, in, I mean, about 12 days after that fast, we begin to see God heal people. We'd never seen it before. People who were deaf begin to hear. People who were uh, uh, scheduled for surgery, they were healed. Come on, somebody. And, and thousands of people have been healed since then. Are you hearing me? But you see... I had to get rid of the unforgiveness and the bitterness I had in my own heart and soul and mind towards other people who had wronged me. I had to fix it. I had to get it right with God. I needed to be cleansed in the blood of Jesus, but I needed the forgiveness of other people. I'm a free man today. Glory to God. Ah, Jesus. The Holy Ghost is trying to help somebody right now. The Holy Ghost is trying to help some of you unforgiveness is a hindrance to your prayer. It may be that husband, that wife, that child, that boss, somebody in your family, somebody out there have wronged you and you got it out for them. Because every time you see them, you just grit your teeth. Just the thought of them, you want to break something up. That's bitterness. You got to let it go, saints. Get rid of it. It's hindering your prayer from being answered. Get rid of that thing. Repent, ask God to forgive you. Ask the forgiveness of others. Come on. This is basic Christianity. This is ABC of Christianity. Let's keep it moving. The fourth thing that will hinder your prayer from being answered is wrong motives. Wrong motives. Let's read this. In the book of James chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, and even when you ask, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Listen, so James is, is, is teaching us some of our prayers are not answered because our motives are wrong. Why are you wanting that prayer to be answered? So you can look super spiritual, so you can look like a big shot, so you can say, I told you so, so you can feel like, well, I'm better than the rest of them. No way. Every time your prayer is answered, that prayer ultimately should be to bring glory to God, should be to bring glory to the name of Jesus, to make you a better Christian, to make your life better. Are you hearing me? So you can do more for the kingdom of God. Are you listening to me? D does the answer of your prayer, is it bringing glory to God? Come on, somebody. Your motive got to be right because if your motives are wrong, James said, you're not going to get that prayer answered. He said, and even when you ask, you don't get it because... Your motives are all wrong. So we got to get our motives right. Lord, cleanse us of wrong motives. Wash us in your blood. Cleanse us of wrong motives. The Holy Ghost is trying to answer your prayer. And the fifth thing that will hinder your prayer from being answered is unbelief. Listen to this. James chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. If you need wisdom... Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure 
that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. If you are full of doubt and unbelief, you are wasting your time. Come on, God, listen, I know what it is to pray with unbelief in my heart and questioning and struggling. And you know what? Such prayers are never answered until you make things right and say, you know what, God, I'm struggling with unbelief. I need you to speak to me. And sure enough, every time I repent of unbelief and I'm spending time studying my Bible and seeking God and reading the Bible, the Holy Ghost will begin to show me scriptures and my faith for that specific thing that I'm praying to God for, my faith come alive. My faith gets strong. My wife even looks at me. She said, I can tell when you, be- I can tell when your faith kicks in. <laughs> that means she could tell when I'm struggling and full of unbelief. But when my faith kicks in, oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Every demon in hell goes to fleeing. Why? Because God will answer that prayer. He answers the prayer of faith. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Let's do a recap. Five hindrances to answered prayer. Unconfessed sin. Rejecting and disobeying God's word unforgiveness that's refusing to forgive others wrong motives and having a heart of unbelief those five things will hinder your prayer from being answered let's pray father god in the name of jesus we confess our sins we confess our faults before you this morning O god wash us in your blood Set us free from bitterness. Set us free from wrong motives. Forgive us for our disobedience to the word of God. Cleanse us of unbelief. Cause our hearts to be full of faith. We repent of these things. You know, and if there's anything else, you know, we covered five, but there are a whole lot of other things that can hinder us, hinder our prayers from being answered. If the Holy Spirit have brought anything to your memory whilst we were teaching the word, Just bow your head in humility before God. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me, God. No wonder my prayer couldn't be answered. You can't be shocking up and fornicating. Living with a man who's not your husband. And you think God's going to answer your prayer? Are you kidding me? The Bible said those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's that's, that's just, that's ABCs of Christianity. You can't be cheating on your husband, cheating on your wife, and think God is going to answer your prayer. Lying, stealing, cheating. Come on, saints. We got to come clean with God. You're indulging in those filthy movies, and then you're wondering why your prayer is not being heard or answered. Are you serious? We got to come clean with God. We can't play with the world and flirt with the world and the things of this world that we know are demonic and not pleasing to God. And then expect him to answer our prayer. Saints, we got to get real with God. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and then I'll receive you as sons and daughters unto myself. He loves you. God wants to answer your prayer. That's why we are sharing about hindrances to answer prayer because he wants your prayer answered and he's pointing out the things that's hindering your prayer so you can get it right with him because he wants to answer your prayer you know God loves you so much we, I love my kids I want what's best for them and the Bible says if you being I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning the Bible says if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask him he loves you so much thank you jesus for helping us 
to see the hindrances. Now that we removed the hindrance, I don't know about you, but I'm expecting answered prayer. I'm expecting testimonies of answered prayer in the name of Jesus. I'm asking 300 of you who have never partnered with this ministry or never done something significant. And you know this ministry has been a blessing to millions of you around the world. I'm asking 300 people to make a commitment for the next 12 months to stand with this ministry. And I'm asking you to do something significant to help us continue to preach this gospel around the world. We want to begin three nights of miracles in a few months, but we cannot accomplish this by ourselves. We need you to stand with us financially. We need you to make a commitment for the next 12 months to do something significant. And people, this is not a joke. This is not a game. I'm very serious about this. If you know you are able to do it and you can make that commitment for the next 12 months, I want you to do something significant for the next 12 months to help us do what God is calling us to do. You know me and Pastor Amy, we take these things very serious. To give in this offering, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash up account. The ministry cash up address is the dollar sign Sean Pinda Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. The ministry Venmo account is at Sean Pinda Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas 75070. Listen, me and Pastor Amy, we love all of you. We appreciate you. And a tremendous, a huge thank you to our, to our partners who make this broadcast possible to help us take this gospel around the world. We love all of you. Join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you.